Hello my SOC universe, this time a shorter video, yes, uh, my internet still is not great, so the video yesterday posted so late, I was not happy about that, it took seven hours to upload. I'm working on, I'm working on solutions, I hope by the uh, beginning of next week uh, it will be better. Um, very in Portugal, who had a brilliant display, but I think we'll start our Nations League coverage um, up north, I actually saw three games, and one of these was Iceland England, which for the most I have to say was a rather unremarkable game. Um, except that uh, Harry Kane had early potentially a good goal, I think it was a good goal, uh, ruled out for offside. Didn't really see that one, but we don't have a um. A video assistant, so in a way this is a little bit throwing it back to all the old times. Also refreshing to see that a uh, decision by the ref is actually sticking. On the other hand, I have to say, yeah, I would have loved to see that. Um, and England, yeah, I think started out well for the first 15 minutes, but then Iceland got more and more organized with like a 4-5-1 almost. I mean, there was always a player going back, back and forth, and England really had tr uh, trouble with them. Iceland, of course, not doing much going forward. Uh, it was also the first time I saw the Puma jerseys by Iceland, uh, which I think are nice. I still think that the um, crest, and we'll do that if whenever I do a initial lecture review, could use a little bit red, and there is a way uh, I did it. If look up on my Twitter, I put a tweet out there not too long ago. So uh, the game actually was headed really for a nil nil draw. I mean, the biggest thing that happened in the game was. Uh, Carl Walker, who already gave away a promising free kick where he saw a yellow in the first half. Uh, and then 70th, absolutely unnecessary challenge, sees a second yellow, walks off. At that point, I thought, yeah, it will not. Uh, this is really headed for a nil-nil. Although I gotta say, um, Iceland was just hanging back and England was at least trying to do something. But I think after the 30th minute, they didn't even have a shot on goal anymore. And then a penalty came their way, uh, where Ingerson, who also was booked before, uh, is blocking. And yeah, by the letter of the law, it's a penalty. Sterling uh, steps up, and I have to say this was uh, the luckiest down the middle penalty ever, because he puts it down the middle a little bit right, and for a second there you thought that the foot of the goalie could have saved that one, but the goalie is jumping too much and it goes in, but uh, lots of luck. And then right off the uh, kickoff, a long ball in, and Gomez brings down the um, Icelandic uh, attacker, and it's another penalty, and I was laughing out loud. How can that be? There was nothing in this game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Birgir Bjarnason, uh, who is probably my favorite Icelandic player, uh, just because of his uh, gruff looks, he tried to do it nice and pull it high, but he pulled it too high. And so England gets a 1-0 win at Iceland. I think overall deserved, but it was really a hard game to break down because uh, yes, they started up brightly, they did more for, for the game, but then Iceland was also very well organized, so I could even see that a nil-nil would have been a fit. But I think uh, just for the effort, England deserved the win. Uh, Belgium, on the other hand, was very effective. Um, first 10 minutes, not, not, not much showing, and uh, with the first shot on the goal, uh, after Merton's corner, then I just uh, slots it home. Makes it 1-0 Belgium. I have to say those yellow Belgium, uh, not yellow, white Belgium Belgians, yes, I know it's the classic look, but it looks a little bit older. I like the yellow a lot better, too, in my uh, opinion. Uh, the game was also not a great watch. I mean, uh, from all that I could tell, it was a rather slow game. I mean, if the highlights then after that goal go straight into deep in the second half to show a chance by Lukaku, uh, that was not even a big one, tells you everything about that game. Um, Denmark could play with Belgium, but in the end um, just couldn't convert the chances. Um, and then uh, uh, Lukaku claims for, make claims for a, pen, a pen penalty, but Tielemans plays on, the ball falls to Mertens, slots at home 2-0, and Belgium is safe home with an opening win and cementing their top status in Europe. Um, the big performance, though, has to be what Portugal did to Croatia. Uh, that game I watched, and I have to thank my wife for, uh, again, choosing the right game. She 
they had put uh, Italy Bosnia that they had it sounds fun Portugal Croatia because I was leaning Sweden France which I had had on the other screen I had for, for some reason Denmark Belgium didn't sound all that nice Croatia had the first chance but then it was all Portugal and it was Livakovic who kept them in the game with incredible saves Portugal hit twice the woodwork I think Cancelo and Joao Felic uh, absolute domination and silky moves everything wonderful to watch except the jersey matchup was horrible uh the, those port portugal jerseys i don't like and those croatia jerseys i surely don't like either anyway um it was great what Port probably was showing and they were playing without ronaldo who had a bee sting in uh, that's got infected in his uh, the big toe which is one of those injuries where on one side you want to laugh out loud, on the other side you know how painful that is and you cannot really play. Uh, but I, I have to say what they had on Bernardo Silva, Diogo Jota, uh, João Felix and Bruno Fernandes up front, that is a Portugal side that can dazzle and dazzle they did. Uh, this was a really impressive display by them and it was only fair that I think uh, midway through first it was 11 to 1 shots for Port Portugal it should have been 2 or 3 nil at that point. Jacques Cancelo with a wonderful shot makes it 1 nil, fully deserves just before the half time. And at that point, you saw already Croatia a little bit breaking away. Um, after there were even a chance in the sack second half, although it was a bit more even, but still leaning heavily towards Port Portugal. Uh, and when Diego Jota then got the box with a silky move, I actually thought at first he hit uh, Bruno Fernandes. Uh, but this is a typical poor Portuguese move, and the way he finishes it in 58-2-0. Uh, a joy, a joy to watch. Um, Croatia brings on Perisic and Brozovic, in my understanding, a little a little bit too late, because I think they could have used uh, the... No, they didn't have Modric, they didn't have Rakitic, but they could have used a little bit more experience in, in there. Um, so yeah, uh, it didn't help at first Peugeot of Village with another nice shot mix, 3-0. Then Croatia uh, uh, kind of felt the honor a little bit hit and tried to get something. They actually get a, um, a goal where Rebic assists Petkovic, one of the few Milan players that did something. I mean, Kia actually defended well at, um, against uh, Belgium, but yeah. However, that goal really, the Petkovic goal, really uh, irked uh, uh, the poor Portuguese who wanted to again get the three goal cushion which would be served and they actually get it with Andre Silva, another Milan player now playing for Frankfurt, uh, slotting it home after Pepe uh, assisted him on that one. And then at, at the end you see Rebic and Andre Silva talking and I'm thinking, oh, they're talking about Milan. I'm curious. I always liked Andre Silva. I would have wished that he is successful at Milan, but maybe he should go to uh, Frank Frankfurt. And maybe they are talking about Frankfurt too, because they both, Rebic Frankfurt, Milan, Silva Frankfurt, Milan. Let's see where this goes. But impressive, impressive for Portugal. Uh, 1A performance. 1A performance. I just wish for a better jersey matchup. Uh, France against Sweden, though, was a lot more messy. That's what I had on the second screen, but with sound, so... Um, it was actually, I mean, for, 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 first of all, I understand Sweden has the dark shorts, but still, um, why cannot France play in their classic blue, white, red against Sweden in yellow and blue? This is one of, this color combination is one of my favorite in soccer. Uh, I always think that the most beautiful match when I cannot decide is either Brazil against Italy or Brazil against France. And Sweden actually slots right uh, in there uh, because it looks just great and colorful. And then we have them Sweden play against a white French team. Those f white jerseys by France are not all that bad. They're a little bit... Um, Missing imagination on the other side. I really like the French flag going going down and it does what it should do Sweden was mostly the better team. I think in the first half um, Although it was rather timid from both sides it was not a great game and it needed a uh, In a moment of individual brilliance by Mbappe who goes past Lustig uh, then uh, there is a of Kind of the ball falls back to him and from a very acute angle he puts it into net to make it 1-0 and celebrates. I thought it was a little bit against the run of play because a nil-nil would have been deserved. In the second half, I had the feeling that France 
uh, kept Sweden a lot more at bay. There was only one uh, distance shot from Forsberg, the, um, um, the goalie. I have his name. Um, Hugo Joris, that's the name. Just uh, bounce, bounce away because it was kind of uh, swerving a little bit. But that was basically it from Sweden. And then late uh, Lindelof seemingly brings down uh, Martial. <laughs> United do well. But I think Martial was more falling than Lindelof doing. And Griezmann steps up and at the last kick of the, of the game puts it high. Griezmann missing, I think, a third penalty already. So I think he should step down as France's penalty taker. France getting, I don't want to say necessarily lucky, but not a, a dirty victory. And that finishes uh, the Group A, uh, League A action. There was a lot of League A uh, this time, but no League B. So we have now Belgium and England uh, asserting themselves on the on their group. Uh, you see Iceland being already considered by the computers in trouble uh, because Kosovo rating and of course Portugal and France also separate them from Sweden and Croatia. Croatia still having the better rating, but let's see where this will go. A uh, little bit of League C. I didn't see much North Macedonia or Armenia were three penalties um, by three different takers. Uh, Alkowski and Nestorovsky for North Macedonia in the first half. And then the, uh, more or less the last kick, kick of the game. Uh, Bersegian uh, gets a penalty goal for Armenia. Georgia gets a rather convincing win at Estonia. Only 1-0, but uh, it, it was a lot more um, decisive than uh, the scoreline would um, suggest. So Kacharava, I think I, I think I couldn't find, no, I couldn't find, find, find a picture for the next game. Uh, I put pictures in where I can, I try to for every game, but for those League C games and sometimes League D games, it's really hard to get pictures. Um, Azerbaijan, Luxembourg was a remarkable re result because Azerbaijan with a very stupid uh, challenge goes already down a man Mid midway through the first half, then they still with the first shot of goal, although Luxembourg, I'm not sure it is, um, moves uh, forward, but see, Azerbaijan first shot and goal makes it 1 0 just before the half. This was uh, a bit against the run of play, but an early on goal by uh, Krivotsiuk, who just wants to uh, take the ball away and put it into your net, uh, equalizes and then a penalty. There was a hand handball and Rodriguez steps up. And it's 2 1 for Luxembourg. And Luxembourg gets an away win, which is not something that they have very often. In that group, though, I think we will see Montenegro is clearly uh, the class of the, of the group. Uh, Jovedic with two goals in the second half uh, seal a very well earned victory over. Cyprus couldn't find pictures for that one either. And then a big clash, Gibraltar against San Marino. I saw actually uh, some of the first and a little bit on the ending of the second half. Um, I have to say, it's just great to watch such a small stadium and so on. Uh, Gibraltar had more of the game. San Marino tried to hold back, but it was... It was not that there weren't chances because Gigi was about the first shot and goal after Walker uh, free kick. Toria heads it in. It was a nicely taken goal, it puts Gibraltar in front. Um, Berardi has a huge chance to equalize for San Marino. I was wondering if this is the Berardi from um, Sassuolo, but I doubt it. I have to look it up after. I should have looked it up before. Uh, had a big chance, but also Gibraltar had chances. In the end, Gibraltar hangs on to a well deserve it. Win. So let's look at the League C and League D tables. Uh, in League C, as I said, Montenegro, the class of the, of the group, but Luxembourg gets a big win away from home. Uh, in the second one, Georgia and North Macedonia probably will uh, make the will fight for who goes up uh, one league. Georgia actually in a really good run, having won lots of games as of late. And uh, League D, Gibraltar stays in first place. Of course, after win, but Liechtenstein hasn't played yet. They will play Liechtenstein away from home, Gibraltar next, and then we'll see what San Marino will do. What's on the menu for today? I think the early are a little bit intriguing. We have Wales, Bulgaria, and Andorra, Ferry Islands. I love those League D matches, but I think this will go Wales, Bulgaria. Um, prob probably then, I think Ireland, Finland, and Hungary, Russia are very intriguing matchups uh, at the six o'clock spot. Even though there's Spain, Ukraine, uh, I, I'm also curious what Ukraine would do against Spain. So I have to see 
where I'll go that one. And I'm, I have to say the evening matchups are all not that great. I mean, Switzerland against Germany is clearly the big one there. Uh, but yeah, you know. And Serbia, Turkey, that sounds a little bit more, but uh, both of them have not been all, all the great. So maybe it's Kosovo or Greece. That could be interesting too. Anyway, let me know what you'll be watching. More importantly, let, let me know if you saw any games yesterday and drop a line below what you thought about these games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.